Um, and with that, uh, let's move to our first speaker, who's Ha Wu from Tonji University, and he will present on deep learning Markov and Cooper models with physics constraints. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Uh, uh, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the MSR. Uh, 2020 gave me such an opportunity to introduce our recent work on Markov models and the Kubman models. Uh, this is a uh, joint work with uh, Andrea Smart and uh, uh, Luca, Pasp uh, Luca Pasquale and uh, Professor Frank Noy. So they all come from the uh, AI for Science group in Free University of Berlin, and uh, I'm also the uh, former member from that group. Uh, okay, so I think this work is also very highly uh, is highly related to the uh, talk of the Professor Cruz, and it, it is still about the the Goodman models of the um, dynamic systems. But here we consider a little journal that we consider the Markov dynamics. Okay, now suppose that we have a, a Markov process, so x1, x2 to uh, xt. Of course, we, we all know that we can describe the dynamics of the system by using the transition density, right? So it is defined by the uh, a conditional, a conditional distribution of the xt plus tau if we know that the state is x at time t. Okay, uh, of course. So as as, as Professor Cruz has said, that we can also uh, equivalently describe the dynamics by using the Kubman operator. Okay, so the Kubman operator is defined like uh, this equation, and it describes uh, how to say the evolution of the observables. Uh, of course. Uh, there are a lot of theories and the methods about the Kuhlman operator, but the, in my opinion, I think the most important thing of the Kuhlman operator is that uh, it is always the linear operator. So maybe it has a very high dimension or infinite dimension, but this, this is a, a linear operator, so it is very easy to prove from its definition. So that means no matter how nonlinear the original system is, we can always use some linear model to, to describe it exactly without any error. Okay, so then based on such a fact, so we can get some uh, finite dimension, uh, finite dimensional of the approximation of the Kuhlman operator or the finite dimensional approximation of the Markovian dynamics. Okay, so th th how to do that? So firstly, we suppose that we have some data, so some trajectory data from x1 to xt, and then we can map all the state to some observables or to some basis functions, chi. Okay, so we, we can also call it the coordinates, right? And then we assume that uh, the system, uh, the, the, the dynamics of the observables is linear. Then we can get some linear model, and uh, based on the linearity of the Kuhlman operator, we can show that if the set of the uh, of the basis functions is rich enough, then uh, such a model is always occurred. Okay, and then based on such a linear model, we can calculate, for example, eigenvalues and the eigenfunctions of systems. This is, in fact, the extended dynamic mode decomposition method, right? And of course, we can also catch the corresponding uh, approximate transition density from such a model. Okay, uh, but now uh, there is always a question that so. Uh, we can prove that if the dimension of the observable or the basis functions is high enough, then this is a current uh, model. But how about if we only we restrict uh, the dimension of the state or the dimension of the observables? So that and that means that so for example, if we, we assume that the dimension of the chi is is, is fixed to be uh, D, right? And then how do we obtain the, the optimal observable to describe the whole system? So that is a key problem, uh, especially in practical applications, because in practical applications, we can only use finite ones. And I think uh, the, the smaller the set, the better, right? Uh, in fact, uh, in, in the past decades, a lot of methods have been proposed for such, such a problem, and the most traditional one is called the Markov system model. Uh, it is also called the Wooden method in the uh, field of the fluid dynamics. And uh, so the Markov system model, in Mark this is in fact, uh, how to say, a shallow and a non-trainable model. And here, all the observables are defined as an indicator function, okay? And in the recent years, some uh, deep learning-based methods also uh, uh, proposed, like MapNet or deep Markov state model and so on. Uh, but there is a very interesting fact. It is that um, for the Markov state model, for the very traditional model, it is very easy to satisfy all the possible physical constraints. 
uh, but for the deep learning based method, it is difficult. So what does the uh, uh, physical constraints mean here? So generally speaking, so in, in, in many applications, we will, uh, care about the three constraints. The first thing is the normalization. So it is very natural. That means that the integral of the uh, P to X, Y over all the Y, it should be always be one, okay? And the second thing is non-negativity. It is also very natural. It means that the density uh, should be non-negative value. Uh, and this, I think the most important thing and the most uh, difficult thing is the reversibility. Uh, it is also called the detailed balance uh, in, in physics. So what does the reversibility mean and why it is so important? Uh, so the reversibility, it means that uh, the unconditional transition density from one state to another one is equal to uh, the reverse one, okay? So why it is important? Firstly, because it arises from a lot of fundamental physical laws. So for example, uh, it comes from the time reversibility of the Newton um, me mechanism. Uh, it also means that uh, there is no probability of flux uh, in cycles. Okay, and from the perspective of the numerical analysis, the, the, the reversibility or the detailed balance condition means that uh, the transition density of the system can be exactly decomposed into the eigenvalues and the eigenfunctions in real value of space. So if the reversibility is, does not hold, then the spectral structure of the transition density or the Kuhlman models will be very, very complicated. Okay, and but, so why it is difficult? So we can see from the, the de definition of the reliability, we can see that uh, uh, it means the, 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 uh, the, the equation, it should uh, be satisfied for all the possible transition densities. So in fact, this is a functional constraint. Then it is uh, very difficult to handle for, especially if we, we, we define the models by some deep neural networks. Right. So in this paper, we try to solve this problem by by some by some uh, techniques. And now the key idea here is that uh, we try to model both the kinetic model and the equilibrium distribution of the system simultaneously and explicitly. So what does it mean? It means that so we have two models. The first model is a kinetic model. This is exactly just the original Kuhlman models, uh, nothing else. And there's a key difference from, comes from the equilibrium distribution model. So here we assume that the invariant distribution or the stationary distribution of the system, it can be obtained from the reweighting the empirical distribution of the data. So here, rho is the empirical distribution of the data and chi is the basis functions and u is some uh, trainable per, uh, vector. Then we can combine the two models together and finally we will get such a complete uh, expression of the transition density. Now the good, there are two good news. So the first good news is that uh, uh, here, so if we use such a model, then all the physical constraints that we considered before can be transformed into the linear uh, algebraic constraint. So for example, for normalization, uh, it can be satisfied by these two equations and non-negativity, it is very easy. So we can just uh, 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 ensure that all the elements of chi, s and u are non-negative. And the most important thing is that for the time reversibility, it can be very easily satisfied. So if we can just set that s to be a symmetric matrix. So it, it can be very easy to, to prove that and all the details you can see is in our paper. And the, the second good news is that so all the constraints, all the algebraic constraints, they can be enforced by a reparameterization trick when we try to learn all the, post, all the related uh, parameters. Then if we combine all the parts of the models here, we can get uh, such a deep neural network based learning framework. So here, chi, so we, we, we try to use a deep neural network to approximate the, the, the optimal observable chi, okay? <clears throat> And both the uh, uh, kinetic matrix S and the, 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 the equivalent distribution vector U are also trainable. And uh, as we said, that all the, all the constraints that we care about can be, uh, can be described by the reparameterization method. And of course, all the parameters, they can be trained by, minim uh, by maximizing the maximum likelihood or maximizing the, <coughs> sorry, 1P score. Uh, both the scores uh, uh, can 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 mirror the difference between the uh, uh, mirrors difference between the proxy model and the true systems. 
Okay, and the only difference is that so, so here maximum likelihood can only handle the case that uh, uh, the transition density is non-negative, but uh, VAMP-E can be applied to, to more general cases. As, so if the transition density is negative, it is also okay. And we have also two theoretical conclusions. The first thing is that we can prove that such a model, so our model, it is a universal approximator uh, for the reversible microprocesses. So if the dimension of the chi tends to infinite, infinite. and there's a second and the conclusion is that so if we further assume that the, the, the process is stationary, then we can prove that the optimum model can be obtained by the uh, exactly by the dominant eigenvalues and the eigenfunctions of the Kuhnman model. Okay, so this is consistent of the uh, conclusion of the, the traditional EDMD. Okay, now let's see some examples. The first example is let's consider a diffusion process uh, with four potential valves here, one, two, three, four. Okay, and uh, we, uh, because this is a reversible process, so we can show that uh, the eigenvalues of the system must be real valued. But here we perform the simulations very non-equilibrium. So starting from a very non-equilibrium distribution and now let's compare our method and the vamp net, so one previous method before, it does not consider anything about the reversibility. So we can see that, uh, so our method, so the reversible deep Markovsen model, it can get real valued estimated of, estimates of the eigenvalues, right? But the vamp net failed to do that. And uh, of course, we can also try an, another kind of thing is that, uh, uh, so we, we, we try to analyze the convergence of the estimates of the, of the four states of the four potential wells and the estimated implied time scales. So we can see that if the, the, the trajectory becomes longer and longer, so here 2,000, 10,000, 50,000 means the length of the trajectory, then both of the methods will converge to the true, uh, true value, or I mean the approximate error will tend to zero. But if we consider another case, that means we do not have a very long trajectory, but we only have a lot of very short trajectory, very short and very non-equilibrium trajectories. Then we will see that, uh, so the traditional web net, uh, there is, uh, uh, it has a, a significant bias, right? So even we have a lot of data, I mean, the, 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 the error is still very large, but our method, it can convert into zero. I mean, so that means it can well handle the non-equilibrium trajectory data. And of course, oh, our method is a better about one minute the, left. Okay, eigenfunctions. And we also apply our method to a, a, a very big system, so the molecular simulation of the NTR9 protein. And uh, because we have known that there are five standard uh, uh, confirmation of this system, and our method it, with only five observables, it can well approximate uh, such a system. And uh, the accuracy is close to the Markovsky model with 100 state or 100 observables. Okay, so now we go to our conclusion. So I think uh, the major con uh, contribution of this paper is that we proposed an uh, end-to-end deep learning framework for low-dimensional linear models. And uh, uh, we show that uh, the physical constraints can help us to improve the approximate accuracy significantly. Okay, this is, uh, I think, is a major contribution. And uh, in the next step, we will try to uh, apply our method to the, uh, analyze the, the enhanced sampling data. Okay, and uh, finally, I would like to thank all the fundings and especially the long program of IPAM in UCRA because a part of this research was performed in this uh, uh, long program and these references and uh, thank you. Thank you for all. And uh, I think uh, uh, we, can we can maybe discuss several questions later. I would want to have uh, like at least a, a small recap of the discussion about the question about um, the reversibility. Um, so, mm -hmm. Um, can you clarify like for which systems uh, reversibility is important and how important it also it, it is to capture that in the machine learning world? Uh, okay, so I think uh, the reversibility was uh, is satisfied for a lot of, uh, especially the chemical or, or physical processes. And uh, in fact, my background is uh, uh, molecular dynamics. Mm -hmm. So of course, the molecular dynamics is always uh, reversible. And of course, for example, the dynamics or the laundry, I mean, over time to laundry dynamics also satisfies the reversibility. Uh, so that's the reason why uh, it is very important for, 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 for such processes. 
Um, the, of course, in fact, I, I, I want to say that uh, this is, uh, let's say, uh, this work is a part of a more general framework. And uh, we try to uh, find that because uh, we, we, we all know that, so including uh, Professor Kuzer, so we, we get a lot of very powerful method to identify the, the Kuma models or low dimensional models for, 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 for complicated model. Uh, but the problem is that how can we use some, some, some constraints that we know, for example, the reversibility here, and maybe also including, for example, the rotation invariance or the transformation invariance, or for example, the the energy uh, reservation. Uh, it's how to, how do we uh, impose all the constraints into such a model? I think so. If we can find a, a, a good way, then it will help us to 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 improve the, the modeling accuracy very significantly. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, uh, but but um, you would also say that the re reversibility is mostly applicable to these non uh, to these equilibrium dynamics, correct? Uh, equilibrium dynamics, yes. Uh, here, okay. So uh, one thing that. Uh, Okay, so so uh, that that is one uh, let's say one common case is that uh, so we know that the system is is reversible, it is time reversible, uh, but uh, the data is non stationary or the data is non equilibrium because the data starting from some very very uh, non equilibrium distribution, and it uh, of course in theory it will convert into the equilibrium distribution, but maybe the time scales of the system is too large and uh, we do not have uh, enough time to get the to, to achieve the equilibrium. So that means the data is non-stationary, but we want to get some, some reversible or some stationary uh, 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 property of the systems. In this case, I think uh, so our method can work much better than the previous methods. <laughs>